them in Israel. Yet, I never considered the possibilities in extending my, my support beyond that. I lacked what is most important in the definition of an activist, empowerment. Ironically enough, it took a cross-national move into the heart of the Lone Star State to reveal that my commitment to Israel could be deeper. It was in San Antonio, Texas that I first exp uh, began expanding my interest in Israel and for the first time asked myself why I supported the Jewish state beyond my religious ties. It was under this premise that I decided to become more active. My sophomore year in high school, I was invited to speak at an event at a local university as a pro-Israel response to the speaker they were hosting. The young lady who was coming to speak was, sharing, uh, was promoting her book on her visit with Palestinian families within the territory. She was an Ivy League educated girl, who, um, descendant of Holocaust survivors and an adherent to the Jewish faith. And as her presentation went on, she presented a barrage of gruesome pictures and slanted statistics, which at the core delegitimized the entire existence of Israel. <coughs> After sitting and listening to that, I was expected to get up and share my view, which pretty much meant that I was set as a target of a very hostile audience. I can easily say that that was probably the longest evening of my life and unashamedly will admit to you that I cried the entire way home. And so, really, my tears were flowing firstly out of anger for myself, uh, too much for myself in terms of being so naive and putting myself in such a position. But more importantly, my tears were flowing because, um, because a position that sent to the core of what I believed had been challenged. And worst of all, I had been unable to stand up and defend it. That's when I decided that I needed to change that. If I really wanted to be an activist, then I needed to take advantage of the resources available that could actually make me effective in doing so. It was at the beginning of my junior year in high school that I came across the opportunity to travel to Washington, D.C. for the first ever high school summit, which APAC provided. For me, this helped to shift my focus drastically from the SAT to pro-Israel activism. During the summit, I was exposed for the first time to the idea of political activism. Having lived in a different country, I had a deep-rooted appreciation for the United States and its government. But the idea of actually participating and having a say was novel to me. I came home with a more substantial base of knowledge, but also an entirely new focus. I was introduced to lobbying and encouraged to become politically active. Upon coming home, I applied for an internship with a local congressman and became politically active before I could even vote. Perhaps the most distinct, important distinction that my first exposure to APAC gave me was that I didn't need to wait to begin doing something about what I cared about. For the first time in my life, I was told that my impact was valuable not in the future, but right now. Since that experience, I have returned to Washington, D.C. five times to participate in APAC student training opportunities, most recently this past December, where I got first-hand briefings from experts in the field along with testimonies from key political figures on why the U.S.-Israel relationship is so important. I've been challenged and tested on where my support stems from and why my efforts are worthwhile. And through this, have had the ability to develop a position in which my support for Israel is not only about tradition and religion, but about my appreciation for the United States, the country I now call home, and the values that it stands for. I have learned to care not only about Israel, but about the importance of the U.S.-Israel relationship. During my time in high school, I had guidance that steered me away from an inclination to debate the Israeli-Palestinian conflict and engage individuals. Because of the growth of APAC student training, I had the opportunity to spend the remainder of my, high school, of my time in high school already building a base for myself, learning how to become an activist. Now, I'm proud to say sitting in the Longhorn Room um, that I'm at a university in which I will not begin anew, but create a continuation of what I began in high school. Interestingly enough, the same speaker who I encountered my sophomore year in high school came to speak on campus this past semester. 
Her presentation was even more polished than when we last met. Her statistics more appalling, and her hate for Israel even stronger. I, however, had changed drastically, due primarily to my involvement with APAC and the training I had received. Um, this time, I was empowered and ready for her presentation, not because I had witty responses to her attacks or equally compelling pictures of Israeli children, but because with other pro-Israel activists on campus, both Jewish and non-Jewish, Democrats and Republicans, we had already established a structure of proactive engagement of leaders on campus on the importance of the U.S.-Israel relationship. I'd like to make one thing clear. I didn't start college with great aspirations of someday making a difference in the world. I'm a pro-Israel activist making a difference today, due primarily to the guidance I've received from APAC and the generosity of its members. Through not only the continuation, of, but also the growth of APAC's committed members, we can all look forward to a future in which many more are empowered to make their impact today. I'd now like to ask you to take out your APAC membership pledge card. If you've, if you've already given this year, please consider increasing your gift. Thank you again for your support at APAC, and I look forward to seeing you in June at Policy Conference in Washington, D.C.